Okay, so, um, hello, keep quiet. I'm talking. <laughs> so that's the structure of today's uh, the website. And then uh, if you want to look into the details of the HTML DOM structure, you need to open the inspector mode and see the elements, okay? And let's take a look uh, quickly, just select the card and then see the structure of the card. Okay, this is the image. Okay, then uh, under below the image mainly is this part. And we need to select this card and you see this is a card content. And within the card content, you have the span card title and the card title text is also a span. And also within here, you have the the rating, right? Uh, it's just a visualization, doesn't have the accurate number. Um, but you can get the, uh, but more importantly, you can get the URL of the rating, or uh, URL of the card. So the URL of the card is when you, when you click on this picture or click on the card, or click whatever uh, within the card, you can redirect to a new page It's a bit slow to this network is very slow. Yeah, you can redirect to a new page. This new page have this recipe's uh, URL and you have to see the recipe detail page. Okay, this is very important. This is this URL give you this uh, the redirect you to the detail page so that you can get the detail information about the rating, about the description and also the prepare time later we will use okay but how do I get the URL of the of the recipient uh, actually if you buy uh, by chance or maybe by looking to the details of the, the DOM structure you will find you will find so there's a specific tag where is the tag I think stored stored here you can see here uh, under the card under the card right car list is one zero and you can see here the a tag and under the a, a tag you have see the hif okay this hif is the url for the uh, recipient okay so to get this hif you need you need to get this a tag and then using this a tag to get the attribute hif and to get the hif and then call the hif to get a detail page and get the detailed information. So our first task is to get this A tag and using the class. Okay, you can see here different class for this A tag. Okay, you can use um, the uh, the class of, of the card. You can use the MNTL card, uh, or you can use the SMTL document card. Okay, uh, I think we can try first try to use the card class because it's easier. You only need to use uh, full alphabet to specify the card, right? It's e much easier compared to other class. So I'm gonna use the card class to select all the cards within this page, okay? So first thing first, go to my project repository and create a new file. Let's remove the, close all of them. Create a new file called parsing.rb. Okay, so we have some skeleton of the code to to use as a starting point in the description of the question. So we can um, so we can first just Chrome this page out to your local disk. Okay, so we call Chrome this page to your local disk, and then I can copy this skeleton of the code to start my programming. Okay. So I have the uh, library imported. I have the file name. I can call the file and pass the file using the Nogogiri library. And then after that, I can use the search method. So if you don't know where is the search method, you can check the Nogogiri cheat sheet. The cheat sheet is here. I opened up previously. 
So you can use dot search and you can search for the uh, CSS selector using CSS selector, whether it's a, a tag or whether it's a class or whether it's an ID. Okay, you can use these three different syntax to search for the item you want. Okay, you can use a combination of class and the H1 tag, H2 tag as well to search for a more specific uh, element on the H2 tag. Okay, and once you get the element, you can get the, you can see, you can get the content of the element, you can get the class name of the element, right? Uh, actually it's a set so it's a no set means it's an array it's a collection of element right you can grab one of the element using the uh, the array syntax and you can iterate through the no set using the for each loop and you can also get the text of each element using element.text.strip and if you want to get the attribute value right you can use the this kind of uh, attribute syntax to get the hif attribute Okay, so we're basically going through this cheat sheet quickly so that we know how to use the Nogogiri library to work for the Chrome functionality we are going to build. Okay, so we are going to search for the, uh, since we are going to search for the card class in the A tag, so we're gonna do doc dot search and uh, we're gonna use A tag and the class is card. Okay. So we're trying to finish this as same as the cheat sheet, okay? So we can start with the name of the class and then the tag, okay? So just follow the syntax exactly. So the class name and the tag is a tag, okay? Then what we can get is this one will give us uh, elements, which is a collection of Nogogiri elements, which looks like an array, okay? So we result will assign this to an array and then let's print out the elements. Let's see the element, what it entail, okay? So what I want to do is uh, I want to maybe zoom in this a little bit so that, is it, is it visible? Okay, yeah. okay, great. Uh, okay, so we can actually open up the terminal in the IDE in Visual Studio Code and then directly I don't have to switch between IDE and the terminal so I easily I can see both view together. So I can do Ruby and passing dot rb. All right, it give me empty array. Something is weird. It's not giving me the element I want. It give me a empty array. So I'm I'm now going to check whether this is correct. So let's see inside here. Do I have a card? So many card. Okay, some more. A lot of here. Okay, I can use this mini navigation. So I can have this card, SC card, but I'm not able to get this A class, A tag. Um, to tell what, I maybe I just remove A. Let's see, just using dot card to see. Yeah, I can get. Okay, I just basically to to do this kind of uh, page analysis, you need to use this kind of uh, try and error method. So if it doesn't work, then you try another class name, right? Until you find the result. So if I remove a, it works. It works. Um, Sorry, theoretically, what's the difference uh, between uh, result result? The, the a tag or h one? I think theoretically it should combine both right a tag with the class of card so it should, should be more narrow the okay, scope so you, it will yeah, be more return, narrow return a tag, yeah and then. with the class of card so it will be uh, uh, more specific and more accurate because you don't want to select some other you know tag with the class of card as well you want to only narrow down to the a tag with the class of card right it's more accurate but it somehow it's not working so you need to sort of think of other way to do it because maybe this Nogogiri uh, library is not reliable okay it's a third party anyway it's a third party library okay 
So uh, that's why I changed to dot car. It's working. Uh, then let's look at the first element of the car of the element of the result. Okay, so because it's too big, I cannot visualize it. So it's anyway, it's a it's a Nogogiri object. It's very big. So you can see this object returns me this a name is a then it has the attribute has id has class names all the class names here and also have the i think some data doc id uh, which i don't need but i need this hif you can see i need this hif so how do i get this hif uh, already should, should give you this way so you can just use this way to get the hif just follow the cheat sheet you give you the hif okay this url you need to further call this url pass this url to get all the uh, detailed uh, values of the recipient like including the name or the description the rating the prepare time etc etc okay uh, but this is the first step which I did through the exploratory study of the page of the libraries so that I can get uh, the items I want by using this way okay so the next step is of course uh, to to populate it to all the cards within the page okay so then you need to uh, because you need to get all the elements okay so um, so basically you need to do a for each loop so each then do and then the item we can call it art or item it doesn't matter so then within this loop you need to get the hif of each element each item and secondly you need to get um, you need to call the hif okay basically you need to call this hif again using the URL so this is a new URL and uh, you put here uh, but this time you are not opening a file so you're opening a URL so you need to use URI there's an open URL library there's an open URL library which I think is available here yeah open URL library and url.open.read uri.open.read okay then that's the url you get and this is give you another document i call it subdoc okay this subdoc is a recipient detail page okay so what i need to do is basically to check the document detail page see what are the class name or what are the tag name for the specific uh, uh, detail information I want to get so I'll go inside this recipient detail page let me zoom in a bit and I will check inspect the name okay so the name of the recipient is wrapped inside the h1 tag with the class of mm, with a class of this right com type I, I don't know what it is stand for but i can see here there's a more uh, descriptive class name called article heading so we can use article heading as a uh, class name for the uh for this title okay we can get this one and sub again i will use the same way to do it dot search and then i will try I'll narrow this with the class name and h1 so I try whether I can still do this if not I will just remove the h1 okay so I'll just do the p and see well is a what's the result it's still still uh, is empty so I cannot get what I want using this way right okay let's try one in front of dog because the cheat sheet is no space ah okay it's working yeah thanks so it's the cheat sheet need to adjust yeah it's, 
So the cheat sheet is has a space and this is behind. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, then, okay, so then we can uh, get the, so maybe we can also have this one, right? This one is under the H2, right? Yeah, so I think it's H2. Ah, it's A. Yeah, A. A card. Let's work. Let's see. Okay, it's still working. Yeah. So the trick is put the A in front of the class name and then without space. Yeah. Okay. Mm, then what happens is that you can get uh, the heading, and within the heading, you can see here is still a note. Is a Nogogiri node set. Okay, so you can get the first element of the set. And the first, because it only contains one heading, so the first element is the only element. Uh, and then within itself, it has a children attribute. Okay, so we can use children attribute to get the only children within this children element. And then to get the children element, let's see whether we can get. Oh, it's new. You you need to use some some something else to to get it right. Dot dot text. Dot children maybe. Because it's a attribute of children on this node. So let's try children. Let's use. Try and error. Yeah, it works. It's dot children. Okay, so it, using dot children, you can get the node of the text. Then, then you use text dot strip to remove the beginning uh, empty uh, new line and the ending new line as well. So you can run this. You can see we can get all the titles and all that but as i mentioned previously for those without those you know um, it's not a uh, recipient but it's an article you need to exclude them outside of the uh, the path of the this one right so the way to do it is actually i don't even want to call this url if let's say it's not a a project it's not a, a recipient right it's not a right recipient so what i need to do i need to see the difference between this and this what we can observe is that um, the difference is that uh it, it, it both have the a tag but i think there's a the difference is that it doesn't have the rating so for the article it doesn't have the rating so as long as we find this card doesn't have a rating, we will skip calling the second passing logic. So how do we get whether this is not doesn't have the rating? We can check there's a rating uh, class here. Okay, so recipient card meta rating count. Right? So my way is just check whether you have the rating this class within your card. Okay, so what we do is we do this item dot search okay and then we add this class okay so if if let's say this is returning uh nil uh, not nil it will return you a array so if it's an empty array check whether it's empty uh then i will skip the rest the, I will not doing the rest of jobs. Okay, so I will just do it when I check it's not empty. So it means it has a rating, rating count. Okay, so let's see whether this will solve the problem of this new class. Yeah, so it, it solved the new class problem because it's only do the second passing 
if we see that you have the class of recipient card rating count rating count okay so you can search within the card find this class of div then you will further proceed to the second url passing otherwise you will just skip okay so great so we can actually store this as the title of the name of the uh, recipient uh, and then and then we need also other information right we need to solve the second problem of how to get the rating how to get the description how to get the prepare time etc etc so how do we do that okay so we can take a look the recipient find the right class for it so it's also involve a little bit more uh, exploratory study of the page so you can see here the rating is under the div of this class it's called uh, recipient review bar rating okay so you copy this class out and get this class here by doing this search again okay so this is a div so i just using the class name and then I think it will return me similarly as an array of element. So get the first element because it's the only element you have within this page. And then I think it will also give a children within the children have the text and strip. Okay, so I'm gonna do this kind of print out to see whether this is the things that I can, you know, I can get. Okay, so I just get this one. You can see it will print out the number which is the rating okay so but you can see here is code inside the string so it's a string it's not a, a number so we need to convert it into a number okay so rating equal to this number okay because it's a floating number it's not integer number so it's not 2i it's 2f okay so you run this again Never mind, you just run rating again. This rating, you can see it becomes a floating number. Okay, so similarly, you can do this for other things, for other information. The description, you can also do that using this article subheading. So copy this out. description and uh, copy the article heading class it's p then you add p to narrow it down to only the p then you don't need this 2f and print out the description okay so i get all the descriptions so then the next one is the prepare time prepare time yeah so prepare time is encoded within this div with the class of this long class name so we copy this long class name this is a div, div. div. this is prepare time okay so I'm I'm getting all the information I need and that's correct and then I can use this logic to inside my MVC framework okay so this is the first step it it, it it's not very complicated you can see only cost me around 10 10 lines of code to pass this the page right to get all the recipients right so it's not that complicated actually after you have done the analysis of the home page correctly right 
yeah so the next step is uh, of course uh, I mentioned that uh, this is only one way to do it it's like uh, you download the uh, the query page to your local disk and then you pass it locally you speed up the analyze uh, loop but you need to make it online as well so you need to basically be able to pass a URL to the code and then the code will pass will call will curl the uh, HTML page from the internet and then pass within the itself so you need to actually change it to use the URL instead so we're gonna do the second step convert this from a local file to an online URL okay so we're gonna use the URL so change this to a URL so the URL will be uh, this URL right so I'm gonna Yeah, right? Uh, so that's prep and proto. So mm. both of them uses the same div and same class. Both of them using the so same. So if that's the case, should we use another dot first? Or can we use another dot first? Like the value is exactly the same. Oh, it doesn't matter, right? Because I'm using the first one. And the first one is always the prep and time. The, the, the total time is second one. Because the order. Right? So I'm always getting the prepare time. Yeah. Okay, so I need to pass this strawberry as a keyword instead of a hard code one. So I need to replace it with a keyword variable. Right? Let's say keyword strawberry and use it inside this string interpolation. Oh, no, not string, not this one, keyword. Yeah. Keyword. And then, normally the best practice is not cut code this URL, okay? Because you may want to replace the URL for other URLs. So, normally we want to have a base URL. That, that's the best practice, right? Normally, we have a base URL, then the base URL is, is a variable, and then you use this base URL inside your URL, concatenate base URL and the keyword together, then use it inside your code. So you need to change these two URI, open, then URL, then the read. Okay. So I think there's another URL here. So we can just remove this variable, local variable, for here. Just avoid the conflict. Okay. So then we can try test again. There's no print. Let's print. Just print all every all the information. Rating and let's put the rating in a bracket. And description and uh, description inside and then the prepare time okay so okay so we can see here it's uh, all the information about the recipient are properly captured from this program okay so we are quite confident this file, this passing dot rb file, work as we expected. Okay. So the next step is trying to building or building this logic into our MVC framework and allow the user to interact with it. So 
um, we need to get our previous works uh, library and then put it inside here. So what I have is uh, I have download the last lesson solutions and then I'm gonna copy the last solutions to this folder. Okay, so this is my current setup. This is based on the last solution. Okay. Uh, what we need to do is actually add uh, one more way is to have something like have something like uh, the fourth option because you already have from the last cookbook we already have list all the recipient add the recipient delete the recipient right but uh, what additionally we have in this lesson is we want to import the recipient from the internet right so that that's why we need to have this option okay so let's take a look at the router so it's from the top-down approach we see these are the options we have but we don't have import the recipient from the internet yet so we need to this add these options here so we need to add a display task add a false option import a recipient from the internet okay change this to false and change the last one to fifth okay and uh, then i need to change the description five okay and uh, we need to add a method inside the controller to allow you to import okay so what i want to do is i want to add a controller method Define import. Okay. Uh, and here what is the main logic of what I just now have coded. This is the main logic I have coded. I need to ask for the you ask for the keyword from the user, and then call the API with the key, with the query keyword, and then pass the page. Okay. So I can copy this code inside the controller. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the first step is inside controller is I'm not going to hard code the keyword. The code keyword you should be coming from the user input. Okay. So how do we ask for the user input? We rely on the view layer, right? We always ask the user input and display to the user through the view layer. So here we're gonna ask user for the keyword. Since we already have the ask user for stuff, we can reuse this method. We don't have to create a new method for it because this is a method that actually work for us. Okay, so we're gonna just call this method view ask user for and the question is keyword okay so the keyword is there and the url is also same and then everything else is the same but here we're gonna not gonna to print out these messages we're gonna create a new recipient with the attribute of name rating description prepare time that we have cloned from the page the web page okay so what is the next step is actually chrome the web page and get the recipient right and uh, and then we're gonna display the first five results and also ask the user to choose which one to import so first of all we need to have an array okay so we need to have a recipients array which is an empty array and here we need to create a recipe with this new method but currently the recipe only have two attributes name and description so we need to enhance it by adding new prepare time and also the what else uh rating, huh? rating. rating yeah rating rating Prepare time. Okay. Rating and prepare. Prepare time. 
waiting prepare time okay so this one will complete the recipient based on the requirement and then controller here we're gonna create this recipient using this name description and rating and prepare time okay so make sure it's uh, the right order and we're gonna insert into the recipes array okay it give us this list of recipes and but we're only gonna display the first five so um, the, the more efficient way is just limit these to first five before we call it because uh, um, actually we don't have to call all the we don't have to crawl all the cards because we only want to display the first five right so if let's say uh, there are five already five we can just stop stop the the loop here so what we want we, what we're gonna do is have a count so this count will count how many I have right now in my actually we don't need to have a count actually we just check yeah we just check if the recipes array length is bigger than five if it's bigger than five I'm just gonna break can I break here I think I can break let's try I haven't done this this improvise so let's see so uh, if let's say this is bigger than five I'm gonna display so I'm just gonna print the CP here for now Okay, let's do this. Oh, it's returning everything. Hmm. So it's not working. It's okay. It's uh, it's not that important. We can look into this later. Hmm. But actually what we want to do is just display the first five. Okay, so first five is using this syntax recipient one to five Okay, so it will it will display only five top five, right? Hmm? It's more than five One two one two three four five. Yeah more than five. It's more than five mm. How come is that? Oh, because I'm not using. Oh, I'm now using. I'm. I'm still pass. I'm still running the passing dot rb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's. It's not the right method. So how do I? Hmm, how do I test this? Uh. So how about this? I just put this into passing dot rb. Yeah. So I just put into the passing dot rb. I still calling this method but I have a logic here to stop passing if let's say the length is larger than or equal to 5 I'm just gonna break okay, so I can, okay then I'm gonna put print out the recipes and I'm gonna call this again and initialize method the receipt Oh, I need to require require relative and and uh, oh it's inside the lib then receive dot rp is it five I think it's a five Let's see the lens. Oh, it's six. Oh, it should be larger than four because the index starts from zero. Yeah, it's five. So yeah, this this code working. So what we wanna do is if it's larger than four, we're gonna stop. Okay, 
then I just gonna pop I just gonna print out everything here right but the print the print out logic here is gonna be I am gonna extract this into the view layer okay to print out all the recipients that I have okay so let's see whether I can reuse uh, I think I can reuse this I can reuse this playlist right I can display the recipient name and also the recipient dot rating and then the recipient dot prepare time and ask the user to choose okay so let's first use this method to do the job mm, so the name is list display oh it's display recipients receive also a recipient okay, display list and uh, recipients okay okay so what i want to do is also we're gonna run this app.rb because I, I need to test the real uh, application so I need to run real application instead of the parsing the RB lib okay so the URL is wrong then I make a constant assignment so I need to move this out so I need to move the base URL out because it becomes a global variable and uh, okay so I can reference here yeah some errors wrong number of arguments so in recipient rb4 in initialize i have four arguments and in the cookbook new i have only two okay just fix that two one three and then also inside also inside here i need to fix this recipient.rating and recipients because this is where i save to the csv i also want to save the rating as well as the prepare time as well okay and when i read from load from the csv i also want to read all the argument required argument that uh, required by the recipient okay so when we look at this recipient.csv um, actually it missed the key information so i'm just gonna complete them two minutes and let's say four four minutes okay just make some mock data all right so then i run this again okay you'll show there's a uh, instructions one two three four five and show all the recipients you can see uh, it has display everything correctly uh, maybe i want to sh separate them out um, so rating has a rating right so rating you need to have something like slash five okay so something like that and the prepare time is description prepare time okay separate it okay so one so you have this information that you load from CSV and you display it perfectly, right? And then now we're gonna test our input functionality for okay? jump out immediately. Four. E, how come it's not working? Okay, so it's not working, so let's take a look at the route. It must be route O because I'm haven't added in the controller input. So let's adding the controller import okay so for the action of four we need we can call the controller dot import let's try it again okay so that's correct and trigger the controller import the first step is asking for the keyword let's say strawberry okay another error so this error is asking that uninitialized constant controller no gogiri so I don't have the Nogogiri, so I need to import the Nogogiri inside this controller. Okay, so open URL also need. So add these two missing libraries, then call it again. 
Okay, then four. Strawberry. Okay, it will run the Chrome function, passing everything, and then it will return me some errors again. So you can see it's undefined method display list. So this is because inside the controller, I called display list is not a method inside the controller, right? So it is a method in the view. So I need to add view dot. Okay, so we solve the problem when we face them. Okay, one by one, in the strawberry. All right, so you have the, you have the uh, recipients that get it from the website, All right? So you have the long list of uh, information about the recipient. You can see the strawberry topping, you can see uh, strawberry pie, strawberry shortcake, strawberry, uh, other strawberries, okay? So then what next? The next is asking the user to select one of them and then you will add into the recipient repository okay so inside the import the next is view get there's a get using index so i can reuse that ask user for index ask user for index and the index is equal to and then once I get the index of the element, I can insert this receipt because it's an array. So I can use this to get the receipt that the user want to insert into the repository and uh, call the repository method. So there's a repository method, cookbook. The repository is actually cookbook. Okay, cookbook dot add recipient to add into the repository right uh, then uh, I see that res add recipient will actually add this recipient into the recipient array and save into CSV to persist it into the CSV file okay so I can test it by looking at CSV file whether it will add a new line here right so let's do this Again, just restart the server and then we can do four and strawberry. Right, it will see one, two, three, four, five, and then just type one. You can see here it add the strawberry into the CSV. So it's successfully. Okay, so you can see the rating, you can see the prepare time as well. Have, have we uh, finished the for finish this challenge? So we need to add this line, right? Import something. So we need to actually when we have this one, we need to actually print out some messages, puts, right? And see here and skip the code and then put the name of the strawberry here so strawberry the receipt index dot the name okay we add this importing and also we need to have oh we 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 don't want to display everything of the recipient we only want to display the name so we need to write a new method for display okay so we need to actually print out these messages and also print out all the options and display these messages display only the first five results okay so what we want to do in the view we're gonna copy this one but display list options okay so recipient each only the name without all the detailed information delete this right and uh, and add one more thing add this information CP 
application online so we're gonna we can add this one into the controller okay so add this one into the controller Okay, this is the first line when you begin the search and then also you have to display only the first five results so you can add uh, one more line here to display only the first five results like this okay so then i ask the user for the input putting in print out the message and then add the recipient okay so these are the logic that we have uh implemented so far so let's see the complete s s complete uh, loop okay s strawberry looking for strawberry recipient on the internet and these are the all the options how come it's still that oh i haven't called it display list options okay so for keyword strawberry yeah so everything is okay then we select select second one okay so importing so you can see here you will have additional line here great all right so <clears throat> that's the, the the main gist of today's challenge okay so the next is uh what are what are the rest we gonna implement it rating we added uh, we also need to add a marker as the recipient is done so we need to add a new attribute inside the recipient called completed completed and here the completed is that whenever you create a new recipient you will actually default the complete as false so because when whenever you call initialize a new recipient is not done yet so the completed is false but you need to have um, mark as done okay you need to have a method called mark as done and this method this method will give you the will change the completed to true okay And you also need to have a method called done, okay? And this will return the completed, okay? So basically, this is a query to query with a complete whether this recipient is completed or not. <coughs> it's a status query. And mark as done is change the complete flag to true, okay? So you add these two. Um, so, so you don't need the attribute reader, right? Uh, you don't need the attribute reader. Ah, uh, you don't need the attribute reader, <coughs> yeah. Because if you want to make it uh, more descriptive, then you can add this question mark. So you have you have this use, so you don't have to have the attribute reader. Mm. Okay. So in this way, uh, I can have, uh, I can change the view layer. And the view layer, when we display the list, we can have sort of, check the receipt dot done if it's done then i will display x otherwise i will display an empty space uh, and also uh, when we are going to have another action to mark the recipient is done right so we're gonna have another action to mark the recipient is done mark uh, receipt is done okay so exist the program becomes six and it changes the description have a one more option six and you add one more method inside the controller to handle this mark as done okay so we'll call it 
we we'll call it uh, temporarily. We we'll can call it mark as just mark it as done. Okay. Okay, mark as done. Uh, and then and then we're gonna do this define mark as done and here. So the first thing first is also display all the options. Okay, so we're gonna do display recipes recipes called display all the recipes and gets the input from the user display or get the input from the user and then core how do I get oh yeah cookbook cookbook dot cookbook dot all oh, right oh yeah oh then receipts so we get all the receipts from cookbook.all then uh I actually just apply index directly no need but all we can get all the recipe that call that recipes mark as done all right so display receipt and get the index from the user and then get that specific receipt and call its mark as done all right so this is market done for the question mark yeah. for for this uh, for this controller okay so let's see whether it works yeah it should be straightforward you just need to get that recipes handler and the call market is done on that recipe recipe so it is oh it is an error so it's an error for the view layer so we need to change that so recipe recipe done question mark if it's done then x then if it's not it's empty space list all the recipes okay so you can see i have additional bracket here to show the status okay then i will check i will mark one of it as done i will select first one so first uh, recipe is done and I'll list all of them. You can see here the first recipe has a cross sign inside the mark. Okay. Then I will choose five again, select two. Again, the second one has the cross sign. Okay. So that's how I make mark has done. Complete status okay yeah any questions i take a pause if you exit the app mm. you re, so you, you press six six yeah then you relaunch the app it, it will does it does it mark as this oh i, I haven't uh installed that information yet hey eh? also so says that it done works. it works <laughs> 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 How come it works? Mm -hmm. But but in CSCB I don't have this uh, information. <laughs> I didn't store the information, right? So somehow it works. Coincidentally, uh, I think you shouldn't because I don't have this information. Oh, it's not working. No, it's not. So, you, so it, by right, it should not work because I haven't stored this inside the CSV. So to make it store this information, I uh, I should add this into the cookbook.rb. So what I want to do is also add this information into, uh, add this, store this information into the CSV. So recipe dot uh, uh, I need to yeah done yeah so I need to actually store this done into the CSV and when I read it so so this done will return me true and false right 
when you store inside the CSV, it will store true and false as a string. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, when you read it, it's as it's as a string. So so when you actually create an, the recipe, you have to have to convert the string true and false into a boolean true and false. So the w way to do it is that when you have this row four, right? It's a string, right? Is raw data is a string. So you need to compare this with true. If it's true, the string is a true, then it will return you a boolean true. Otherwise, it's it's false. Okay. Oh, that's an error. Number of oh, I see. I also need to accept this one as a argument. Okay, then in this case, it's not a default one anymore. Mm, is there any indication implication of the error here? Yeah, it will have some errors because I don't have a value for the so I will just pass false. Okay. Well, is there any other for receipt dot new? Also here, this is passing dot rp, so it's okay. And this is a create code create. I also need to handle. And this one is this one is I added. This one I added. So for normal create, right? You also need to add the rating and the this the prepare time okay and also the completeness okay but i want to just cut my live code short so i'm just gonna add some default rating okay so and also some default prepare time okay and i'm gonna have list all the recipients okay then mark as done index display and if you go to the csv okay how come it's not saved oh i see so when i mark as it done it's not calling save csv so when i actually mark this as done i also need to call csv so you can see it's calling csv within the cookbook within the add recipient and re remove recipient so i need to actually call this save to csv under the controller of mark as done so i need to expose this save to csv save to csv save to csv right and then uh, i will just call this cookbook call save to csv okay so to make it persistent every time i call mark has done Yeah. there's an error private method oh, okay so I just changed the name otherwise it's conflict I call it persist okay so let's see whether yeah you store true and false and next time I load it again, you can see here it has the cross sign. Okay, so you can read from the database, from the file, and then set the complete to true for the first one, and for the rest, it set the complete to false based on the data I have. Ooh, so that's all. That's all for the main mm, requirement. Any questions? Yeah, all the way to the top. Mm. Yeah. 
because we need to use the no-go query and open URL inside our import method. Just now I, I have the error, right? If, yeah. if I didn't import, then how does it know that no-go query is from the library? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if we take if we put this out, refer to um, the passing then not required. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so this is the main logic of the passing. So next is we're gonna put the passing logic in a separate service. So that, that separate service we can reuse across different application. Okay, so we're gonna call this service uh, scraping all recipient service. So let's create a new file. So script. So in Ruby, you need to follow the convention to make this as a snake case, lower snake case. So under this file. There's a typo here, so R should be uppercase. So the class name should be uh, upper camel case. Uh, then the initialize keyword. Actually, I don't like to have the keyword as the attribute. So I actually remove this. I will tell you why. Every time you call, you have a different keyword to pass in. So actually, I want to have a keyword as the argument. Because every time I call this method call, I need to have a different keyword to search for, right? So here I just gonna copy the main logic of my UI, the import here. And I need to import, I need to copy this libraries and the base URL to the service. Okay, so I have the base URL, I have the logic to call the URL and uh, I have the passing logic here, um, which you can create another method for the passing logic as well if you want. And you also have the display. Uh, actually, the display should be outside of this. Display should be outside. Yeah, it should be here. And uh, yeah, so this one should be here. This one is only handles the passing of the URL and then return the receipt. Re recipients. Yeah, add a re return here and then you will return. And uh, here we just gonna call, since we're gonna have a service, we, ha we can create a service handler. And the service handler is basically scrape.service.new and then we need to require this scrape. scrape. Require this, okay, so here. Right, so dot new and create a service, and then the service dot uh, core keyword as an argument, and then return the receipts and equal. Okay, then display the options, display the only five result, and uh, this one should be only five result. Okay, then uh, and then. Display only five result here. Yeah, display this, and then you have the index, and then you will add this into the recipients. Yeah, yeah, that's the uh, logic. And then I will try to run it again. The four keyword. Let's say let's try mango. Okay. Yeah, try different food. And we can use the first one. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we have. Right, we have the fifth one is a mango dish. Okay. Something to take note 
for example, here I think the scraping part is a bit too complicated. Yeah, depends on whether you want to reflect it. If you want to reflect it, you can actually reflect that this whole chunk into another method. Okay, for example, you can this dog right. So you can put this one inside another method called passing. Okay, passing is a dog. Okay, inside the dog, you will do here. You will have the receipt. The indentation is very weird. It's not regular. Okay, so it's it will pass the pass the HTML only for the first five element. Then you return this receipt, and then you will have equal to Passing and dock. Okay, so you can also just have this. Okay, so in this case, um, actually, this one also need to be inside, if possible. Just put this one inside, and you are gonna have only the keyword. Okay, so keyword, keyword, keyword. Is it make sense? <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I save some some lines, but it's about the same, right? <laughs> you just put this in a separate. Mm. Yeah, let me let me just change this to the original. Yeah, I just call this and pass the return dog, and then you have the passing the main call passing logic here. Okay, yeah, yeah, it just looks a bit nicer. Yeah. Four. Let's use Apple. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay, like this. So, any questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just that advantage. Only that. Advantage. Uh, only that advantage. You don't have to fix the order. Yeah, that's only the advantage. Mm. Hello. What, what kind of uh, circumstances uh, the hash will, will be preferred? What kind of circumstance? Uh, if you have some. Mm, I guess if you you have some something like uh, some default value within your initialized method for the keyword, then you can use hash. Otherwise, yeah, like default value for some attribute. If you the user don't but provide. But even that, that even with default value, you can also just uh, assign it to it, right? Without the hash. Without a hash, yeah, I mean, you can have just, a just a just instance variable. Like yeah, instance yeah, yeah, variable. yeah. I think the hash is just that you can change the order. Yeah, you don't have to go 
too much about what's the difference why you use hash in certain circumstances. It's just a preference. You can use both as long as you use it right. Yeah. It's just that the key, uh, the, the hash has the advantage of you can uh, use it as different order of the keyword. Yeah. This way is actually easier. Yeah, it's, up, it's a preference. It's up to you. As long as you use it right. When you use the positional argument, you must make sure the order of the argument is in right. Yeah. And if you use the hash, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think I have done that.